This is a Star Wars review of issue 9 of Star Wars by Marvel Comics on September 9, 2015. This series is written by Jason Aaron with art by Stuart Amonin. Let's just get this out of the way. The art in this issue was spectacular. Stuart Amonin has once again captured the faces of the original cast, but done it elegantly. And this issue, in addition to issue 8, have had some really awesome cover art as well as colors. I love this artist and I hope he sticks with the series for a good long while. Getting into the meat of the story, Star Wars 9 has us following a few groups of people. We have Luke out on the smuggler's moon, Nar Shada, Han and Leia dealing with Han's supposed wife and the Empire, and the Rebel Council making decisions. Luke's character is still weak, and it seems like any time he gets a win, it's from sheer dumb luck. This drives the opening chase scene, in which the action is exciting and beautifully drawn. In addition, this leads to the introduction of a new character, Gracchus the Hutt a hut with a six pack and robotic legs. On his neck hangs a necklace of lightsabers. So awesome. Not only that, we're introduced to Gracchus' collection of Jedi artifacts. This issue brings with it a few throwbacks from the prequel trilogy, and honestly, it was pulled off nicely. The Magna Guards, relics of the Clone War, showed up along with a few Easter eggs that span the entire Star Wars timeline. The thing is, this issue feels at home with the prequel trilogy as well as the original trilogy. It bridges the tone of both time periods in a way that's not in your face. It's actually pretty cool seeing Luke Skywalker in a setting filled with products from the Clone Wars. Specifically, the sphere that Luke used the Force to open was intriguing, and it was a great way of introducing some familiar faces again. This is actually one of the few times where the comic book has given new information without it being throwaway. I was genuinely happy with the events that took place. As far as the Han and Leia story goes, I really feel like they're dragging out the Sana Solo mystery a bit too much. She's featured on the cover, but we barely get any new information or even much conversation this issue. For the most part, this portion of the issue was mainly filler. I will say that they got the characterization of Han and Leia down pat though. Star Wars number 9 concludes on a bit of a cliffhanger with Luke Skywalker about to enter another arena battle type situation. This scenario has been beaten to death by Star Wars, so I can't say I'm too excited, but we'll see how this plays out. The final page in this issue sees some fan favorites returning and had me grinning. Overall, this issue provided some nice new additions to the Star Wars universe without going overboard. And you know, I'm not sure why I thought of this while reading, but I do hope they do a Yoda miniseries during the first days of Dagobah, something that could bridge the two trilogies like we saw in this issue's story. That wraps it up for this week's Star Wars Review. Be sure to subscribe to keep up to date. Star Wars Reviews are published each and every Thursday. Don't forget to like the video and let me know what you thought of issue number 9 in the comments.